the laws, the Sharia, they couldn't implement it. Yahya alayhi salam. No power to implement. So they were only prophets. Whatever they received, they delivered the message. But Musa alayhi salam was something more than that. He was a prophet as well as a king. Not with the title of a king. But a king, by that I mean one who has the power of life and death over his people. Whether you call him a president, call him a dictator, call him an emperor, call him what you like. If a man has the power of life and death, a simple word, we say he's a king. So Moses was such a man, he received divine inspiration, he delivered the message, and anybody broke the law, the adulterer and the adulteress stoned them to death. And they would be stoned to death. They were told not to do any work on the Sabbath day, Yom Sab, Saturday, no work. Not even picking up firewood. So a man was found picking up firewood. So they brought him along and they stoned him to death for picking up firewood. That was the law. So he had the power of not only delivering the message but implementing the law. Our Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam same. He was not only a messenger of God but he had the power of life and death over his people. But Jesus Christ when he came, when he came and he was confronted by the Romans, the Jews implicated him and he was brought for trial for treason. That was the trial was for treason against the state that this man is trying to pervert the nation, trying to create turmoil in the nation. So. Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor, questions Jesus. He says, Art thou the king of the Jews? Are you the king? So Jesus says, Thou sayest. That's what you say. So he said, Am I a Jew to say that? But when he was questioned, pressurized further, he says, My kingdom is not of this world. May Konikreik is ni van hierdi world ni. If my kingdom was of this world, then my disciples would have taken up the sword to fight, which they didn't do. So my kingdom is not from hence, not from here, not an earthly kingdom. Mine is a spiritual kingdom, meaning I am a prophet of God, trying to guide people spiritually, not to shoot out or kill people, chopping off people's heads. No, no, that's not my job. I didn't come for that. So he says, my kingdom is not of this world. In other words, his is a spiritual kingdom. Moses had a spiritual as well as a material kingdom. The Prophet Muhammad also had a spiritual as well as a material kingdom. Jesus had only a spiritual kingdom. He was only a prophet. Is that true? So Dumini said, yes. I said, therefore, Jesus is not like Moses, but Muhammad is like Moses. Number six, Moses and Muhammad they brought new laws and new regulations for the people. Before Moses, the Jews didn't have the Ten Commandments. They didn't have a comprehensive law. They knew certain things about good and bad. They knew about God Almighty, but they didn't have a law. Hazrat Musa salam, gives them the Ten Commandments, and he gives them the laws of ceremonial law about purity, what is pak, what is na pak, what is pure, what is impure, what to eat, what not to eat, and every little minutest detail, which they didn't have before. New law, new regulation. The Arabs before Islam also had no law. They were an absolutely a barbaric people. A people, a nation that buried the daughters alive. They married the stepmothers. These Arabs, before in the Iyamul Jahiliya, the days of ignorance before Islam. Drunkards, adulterers, gamblers, fratricidal wars over little things they were fighting for decades. Given the master historian in his decline and fall of the Roman Empire, he describes the situation beautifully. He says, the human brute, the animal in human form, the human brute, almost without sense, is poorly distinguished from the rest of the animal creation. That the only thing that is differentiates him between the animal and him is the form. Ahsani taqweem, Allah has made you in the best of forms. Otherwise, worse than animals. These Arabs, no laws. No regulations. From that, through Allah's kalam, the Quran, our Nabi Kareem, in the 23 years of his prophetic life, he transformed them 
into an angelic people. Thomas Carlyle, one of the greatest uh, thinkers of the past century, he delivered a series of talks in England. And among his hero prophet, he chose our Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Not David as his hero prophet, or Solomon, or Moses, or Jesus. He chose the holy prophet Muhammad as his hero prophet. And in paying a tribute, he says to the Arab nation, it was a birth from darkness into light, this new revelation, new message. It was a birth from darkness into light. Arabia became first alive by means of it. A poor shepherd people, roaming unnoticed in its desert since the creation of the world. These were the Arabs. Nobody would give them a second look. The human rubbish. That's what they were. Alexander the Great passed them by. The Persians passed them by. The Romans passed them by. Nobody was interested in this human rubbish. What are you going to do with them? They didn't know oil was going to come out there. They didn't know. They just passed them by. So see, the unnoticed becomes world notable. The small has grown world great. Within one century afterwards, Arabia was at Granada, that's in Spain, on one hand and at Delhi on the other. Glancing in valor and splendor and the light of genius, Arabia shines over a great section of the world. It says, belief is great, life-giving. The history of a nation becomes fruitful, soul-elevating, great, so soon as it believes. Is it not as if a spark had fallen, one spark on a world of what seemed black, unnoticeable sand? But lo, the sand proves explosive powder, blazes heaven high from Delhi to Granada. This is what the message did overnight. In decades, what the Roman Empire took a thousand years to build, within decades, they built an empire greater than that of Alexander the Great, greater than that of Rome. What did it? Is this new revitalizing message the message of Islam did the job, changed, transformed the nation. New laws, new regulations. Moses brings new laws, new regulations. The Holy Prophet Muhammad brings new laws, new regulations. Jesus Christ, when he was confronted by the Jews, they were thinking that this man is bringing a new religion. So Jesus assures them, according to the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 5, verse 17, 18, and 19, he says, think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am come not to destroy but to fulfill. He says, Muni dink that et hakom het om the vet of the prophetia the ont bintni. Ek het ni hakom om the ont bintni but to fulfill. But to fulfill. I said, is that true? That's what he told the people, that he had brought no new laws, no new regulations. He has come to fulfill the law. He said, whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, or shall teach men so, shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall teach and do, shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. He has come, assuring the Jews with no new laws, no new regulations. He's only come to confirm, fulfill the previous revelation. Is that true? So he said, yes. I said, therefore, Jesus is not like Moses, but Muhammad is like Moses. Number seven. I said, Moses and Muhammad, they both died natural deaths. But according to you, as a Jesus was violently killed on the cross, according to you, is that true? He said, yes. I said, Darom, is Jesus' knee was Moses' knee, Mar Muhammad is was Moses. Therefore, Jesus is not like Moses, but Muhammad is like Moses. Number eight, I said, Moses and Muhammad, they both lie buried on earth. But Jesus is resting in heaven. Is it true? Oh, very happy to say yes. And every time he says yes, he's agreeing with you, is an extra nail. Nail him down. Nail him down. It's a privilege Allah has given you. It is you who choose the role of being a punching bag for them. It is you who choose the role of being a becoming a doormat for them. This is not the role that Allah has in store for you. He says, Li use a hero who a deen a kulli. He's given you a deen that is the master overcome and supersede them all. Kulli, every deen, whether it be Hinduism, Buddhism, Judaism, Christianism, communism, every ism, Islam is destined to master them all. This is his promise. But you want to be a punching bag for them, that's your, your choice. Allah didn't want you to be that. 
a doormat, doormat for people to rub their shoes on. That's your role. You have chosen that. This is not your destiny. So, I said, Moses and Muhammad, they both are buried on earth. But Jesus is resting in heaven. Is it true? He said, yes. I said, therefore, Jesus is not like Moses, but Muhammad is like Moses. And I could see again. I said, no, no, we have to soften things up. You see? Before he looks for the gun. So I said, you know, Dumini, what I have been proving to you is simply one phrase. Suas ye is, like unto thee, like you, like Moses. I gave you eight different reasons to show that Jesus is not like Moses, but Muhammad is like Moses. But it was all to prove that one phrase, Suas ye is, like unto thee, like you, like Moses. That's all. But I said the prophecy, the verse, is more than just that one phrase. It says, I will raise them up a prophet from among the brethren, like unto thee. From among the brethren, not from among themselves, but from among the brethren. So I said, who are the brethren of the Jews? I says, you know, Father Abraham, he had two wives, Sarah and Hagar. We say Sarah and Hajra. He had two wives. From Bibi Hajra, he had the first son. He, in his old age, he was old. And he was praying, he wanted to do Allah's work and said, look, when I die, I don't know what's going to happen to the message that I'm delivering to people. So, Ya Barit Allah, grant me a son, a noble son, a pious son, that he may carry on the good works. And Allah heard his prayer. Allah heard his prayer. And a son was born whose name was Ismail. In Hebrew, Ishmael. Ishmael in Hebrew, Shamia in Samia in Arabic, and Shamia in Hebrew means the same. It means to hear. He says, Samiyallahu liman hamida. When we get up from the ruku, he says, Samiyallahu liman hamida in our salat. He says, Allah listens to the one that praises him. 